Hi everyone, it's Toby. Thank you for joining me. Today we are looking at minimalist sketching with our inks and our watercolours. It's a full length tutorial, but it's quite short because when we minimise everything, when we take it down and make it simple, actually we suddenly produce really great art really quickly. So what are we minimising? Well, everything I can think of. We're going to be minimising the amount of ink on the page, minimising the amount of watercolour on the page. We're going to be choosing two random watercolours from my tub of colour and seeing what happens with just those two colours and nothing else. And in all of that, we're still going to be creative have fun, produce something really great. If you like this style of art, don't forget to check out my course on sketchloose.co.uk and there's a completely free 10 day course you can join there. Without further ado though, let's get minimal, have some fun, be really loose with our sketching. Now, the best thing about minimalist sketching is that it doesn't have to be anything specific. There is no correct minimal amount of things to take with you. So here is my selection of watercolors and what we're gonna do is chuck our hand in, pick out two colours and from those two colours we will make our scene work. So we've got a blue and a yellow and that is going to be fun because our scene is full of green. So already we've got ideas about how we can use these colours to not just be abstract but also be a little bit realist. And let's see what happens when we use just these two colours to create our scene. There's our two colours. We've got a palette, nothing else in there. Got a size six round brush. So just one brush you could easily carry with you. And I've got my fountain pen. So minimal equipment and let's see how we can tackle our scene. So step one, as I always say, is about shapes. It's about grabbing the shapes. And when we are thinking about minimising everything in our sketching, we can also be thinking about minimising the amount of pen work, the amount of detail we put in. So the big thing to focus on first is those clear big shapes. So starting with the sort of lonely tower, we can pop that up. And I'm going to be breaking one of those kind of cardinal rules of art, which is how to place your focal point. And typically we try to avoid the middle, putting it in the middle adds a bit of sort of tension. It, it often just feels better if things are asymmetric. But there are ways of composing images where it's in the middle, sort of like a pyramid, like a triangle. And I think that we can actually just change our, the rest of our composition, change the bushes and things to allow us to put our big tower up in the middle. Now to minimise the detail, instead of doing all these detailed ups and downs underneath this kind of hanging over bit, I'm just doing some wobbles. That suggests that kind of up and down. Coming down, I just make sure that my line's got a little sort of jagged edge to it. And that, of course, suggests some bricks. I will bring that all down. And the other key shape here is obviously that these two halves, these two halves are long thin rectangles so you don't have to think very hard we just got squares we've got rectangles nothing too clever going on at all then how do we get that kind of pyramid feel that kind of pyramid feel to our composition that will make it feel okay well we just build up our our trees around the base and perhaps pop in we've got these these trees at the side we just perhaps bring them a little bit closer to our tower. And we're kind of imagining this kind of pyramid feel. And we can actually get some asymmetry, which will make things feel better. We can get some asymmetry by having those two sides slightly different. And then when we're in the foreground, it's all about just these shapes of these lovely flowers. I'm actually not sure what they are. I was about, I was about to pretend I knew what they were, but I have no idea. But we can still see, when we don't know something, we can still see the shapes. I'm just exaggerating the size of a few of them as well because it'll give us something nice to sort of hang our sketch off having these big foreground shapes and I'm going to pop them in the middle as well even though they're only really at one side and then over here we can put them further back by making them a little bit lighter a little bit smaller and all of this we're just trying to minimize 
everything we're doing. So instead of having all this grass, you've got a few clear shapes of these flowers. Instead of having loads and loads of details, we've just got big clear shapes. And I'm going to actually call that already the end of step one. And from there, we move on to step two, which is, of course, loose colours. Now, so how are we going to minimise that? Well, we've minimised the colours already. We've only got two colours. So now we also want to think about where we're actually going to put our colours. Now, we've got a blue and a yellow. And I actually, I don't want to do, I said, you know, it's great. We've got some ability to mix greens. But I want to stick, if I can, with just playing a lot with just the fact that we've got a blue and a yellow. Maybe we'll have some greens, but let's let's not go too green heavy too quickly. So I'm going to start by doing a kind of minimal sky, just some suggestions of blue meeting up, some suggestions of the sky, but not too much. To keep things minimal as well, a nice thing to do is just have your colours run together. That reduces the amount of lines, it prevents things feeling too busy. So again, let's just do some splashes. And let that sky and the 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 sort of yellowy green that we're using here, if we let it meet and run together, and that's where we'll start getting this kind of abstract feel. Again, just up here, just emphasising perhaps the meeting points, the sky meeting the the uh, the greenery, the hedges, the bushes, the trees, the sky meeting the tower maybe they're the bits just to emphasize so that we can be minimalist but also have some real clarity to our image where else can we just add a few little touches maybe down here a little bit and what i'm trying to do as well is leave our our little flowers at the moment as a nice clear bit of negative space i don't want them to you know they're, they're pink aren't they i don't want them to look like something else at the moment we'll, we'll see as we move do we want to treat them as still negative space or do we do something else different now a few more splashes i'm quite liking the splashes the effect they're giving us and i'm actually probably again in our minimalist sketching technique i'm probably going to almost call that done just want to join up some of these splashes mix some of the blues and yellows together to do that kind of suggestion of of something extra going on Again, let's just join up the edges here and maybe actually I like the asymmetry I was going to say maybe some blue down here but isn't the asymmetry quite nice as it flows across here it kind of emphasizes that yeah this is in the middle but it it kind of gives it that lack of clashing lack of awkwardness of having a, a middle by having the asymmetry in other ways so I'm going to let this dry and we'll move on to step two, which is, of course, as always, bold colours. So there we are. We are basically dry. Now what we're going to do is those bolder colours. Again, we don't want to do too much, but perhaps this is the time where we do mix a nice, powerful green. Because that's something we haven't got yet, a powerful, bold green. We work out how we might use that to sort of affect our scene a bit. And I'm going to use it to just bring a bit of clarity to some of these kind of simple bush shapes. Now this is hopefully not going to overdo things, but what I'm trying to do is actually simplify things, keep it minimal by having these clear shapes sort of back in our mind. Instead of having the kind of really loose colours wobbling everywhere, we, we're kind of bringing back a bit of clarity to our shapes. So just a few touches of that green and remember, we can bring it around these flowers again if we want, just to really help them stand out. We can do some splashes again, maybe keep that asymmetric idea of the splashes. Maybe what we want as well is a bit more of this blue, a little bolder in the sky. So again, we can just touch that in on top. Now we want to be quite gentle because I don't want a, a sky which is too layered, but just to get that richness going in the sky maybe again a few kind of those splashes up there and we can also use this blue maybe just gently to suggest some shadows so we've got a few areas of shadow haven't we and we can kind of also invent some areas of shadow so we can invent that one that the sun is perhaps coming from this side and therefore we can apply little bits of shadow just in a few places just to help show 
So this is a 3D object. And if we want, why not just then use the yellow also to come down this side to sort of drip down and suggest, suggest shadow without, hopefully without overdoing it. You can make some of that blue a tiny bit more intense at the top there. Top there kind of joins things together again. Maybe just a little bit right the way down again. And a few kind of just loose suggestions of texture, loose suggestions of little bits of sort of plant life and things. And don't want to overdo it, so need to stop very soon. But maybe this is our last little bit, just some bit more texture in a couple of these trees. A little bit of softening to join them together. We've got these nice clear shapes, maybe I've overdone it. So let's soften them out. And there we go, that's our bolder colours. Now, I'm going to let this dry one more time, come back in with our pen and restructure. And here we are, mostly dry. Some of the splashes haven't dried. We can come back in with our pen and we can do that step, that step I was called restructuring, where we've got this looseness going on. Still minimal two colours with some mixing, simple shapes. But now we can just re-emphasise those shapes and also maybe start thinking about those final touches at the same time. So thinking about how we just enhance the simplicity of this minimalist sketch um, and take it to the next level. And that's things like just finding where we've left out edges. So a tiny bit more complexity added in just like that. It's thinking about where do we add shadow, maybe with some very simple hatching. Again, just emphasizing what we've already done with that little bit of blue. And again, being nice and clear with the shapes, with those lines. And this is where we also respond. Where have the watercolors done? Let gone rather. Where have the watercolors gone? That's what I'm trying to say. And just follow those edges. Don't force anything. Just follow, react, respond. And just work with your colors, with those lovely loose processes. And there we are. Now within the tower, why not add these little windows? They're very simple. This is hardly breaking the minimalist idea to add these little windows. And what it's doing is adding a point of real contrast, black, white, and that enhances this negative space. Again, we can find those little windows here as well, and we can just add those in as well. Really simple. Maybe just a couple of brick textures and a few more brick textures on this side. We've called this side shadow. So instead of hatching, we can apply a few more textures and that just increases the amount of ink and that gives a suggestion of shadow. And then what are we going to do here? Well, this is quite a distant tree, isn't it? So what we can do is we can just re-emphasize it, give it a bit more texture, but try and leave it nice and faint. Same over here. So we're kind of saying, look, this is a, a distant layer. This is the sort of background. It's probably closer than this, but this is almost our focal point. So we want this to fade. We want it to be nice and light. Coming forward, though, we can just press a little harder and hopefully we'll see this tree, which is already a bit further forward because it's bolder and more in the middle. But hopefully you'll agree that this tree then, with that bold line, just comes even further forward. And a few little textures, little wobbly lines, that kind of thing. And there we go. And what else have we got? We keep talking about these flowers and they haven't got any colour. But what if we do something a little bit rogue? So what if we make them a point of contrast? So we can try first, we could try just doing some hatching. And does that simple hatching, maybe with a bold outline, does that add something? And I think it's not too much, so we can certainly just do that and see what happens at the end of just doing that with all our flowers. Does that sort of add something to scene? I think it's adding quite a lot, actually. I think it's adding a sort of simplicity. It's going, these are in the foreground. It's pulling them away from all this green. It's showing them that we've not forgotten about them, that we have actually meant to do this. These little funny shapes are, you know, can't really tell they're flowers, can you? But you can tell that they're either a flower or like a, a, a ear of corn or a bit of wheat or something. There's something natural just growing in this obviously green landscape. And just like that, I think our minimalist sketch is pretty much done. So we've kind of taken that restructuring phase and also included what I normally call step five, 
details and just incorporated them together. So I'm gonna hide my signature up here and pop my initials down here. Now, if you want to do anything to support my channel, then please leave me a comment down below. Perhaps suggest the next two colors I should use for a similar scene or even give me a scene to do. If you want to find out more of this kind of easy and minimalist style of sketching, check out the videos I've linked below and come across the sketchlooks.co.uk where I have my full courses which explore this exact kind of thing in way more depth. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.